This is the uh, this is the DM24. Um, it's boat raced in the uh, Tour de France à la which is a 23-day uh, event, um, 21 days of racing across 10 venues, taking the entire coast of France, 35 boat fleet, and this is the the strict one design class that uh, that we race in. Um, so this is our boat. It's called Raygun, um, and the team's called Sailsmith Racing. And uh, I'll just take you around for a quick uh, a quick tour of the boat. Uh, so just starting at the back of the boat. Um, it's pretty simple. We've got two rudders on this boat connected with a carbon crossbeam. Now, our tiller extension goes on the crossbeam, and uh, when we're sailing, we lock both our rudders down using this, uh, this piston here, goes into there, stops the rudders kicking up. Then, going forward, we have uh, these winches. So, these are primary winches, and we use those just for the, just for the spinnaker sheet. Um, our spinnaker sheet comes from the leeward side, in, stowed in the pocket there and around the winch and uh, so that means that we've always got weight to windward when we're going downwind so we can be as fast as possible and make the most of the, uh, the width of the platform that gives us all the power. Um, our shrouds are just Dyneema so it's uncommon for um, a lot of regular boats now to, to have Dyneema shrouds but they're very very light and they're very strong uh, so we have a 10 millimeter uh, Dyneema and then we just lash them down and uh, what this also means is that we have a fixed force day, but we can alter our rig tension on the water by leading the lashing to the winch. And in between races, we can, uh, we can adjust our rig, so we're always best set up, best set up for, the, for the conditions. So right at the back of the boat here, we have our main sheet. It's pretty powerful. It's a lot more powerful than, um, than most boats of this size because we've got a big square top mainsail. So our mainsail is almost a rectangle, and it needs a lot of force to pull that leech into, uh, into line. So we have a coarse main sheet here and uh, led to a, to a fine main sheet here. So even when we're max on this, we can still use the, all the purchase up at the rig there to, uh, to bring on even more. Then we then have a traveler, just runs along a track here at the back. So we then just use that. We never have it above the center line and then we just have it up the center line for full power. And as it gets breezier, we just drop it and drop it. And then downwind, we have it right on the corners when we're, when we're really sending it. So when we are going downwind, we'll do about um, up to 23 knots at times. Um, though what's really exciting about this boat, the peaks aren't that high, but um, we'll hit really good averages. We'll stay at 20, 21 knots fairly easily downwind, which is just so close to the peak, which is what makes the racing in these boats so exciting. So you're going downwind and you might have, on a port and starboard, you might have a closing speed of 30 knots, which um, obviously makes things pretty interesting, especially at crowded mark roundings. All the guys push the boats and some of the teams even have spare hulls waiting on shore. So if something the worst does happen, they can sail in and do a pit stop and get back out for the last race. We have outhaul on a strop here. That's more of a set and forget at the beginning of the race. The main at the bottom, it's fully battened, so our outhaul is, uh, doesn't, doesn't do a lot. It only really controls the bottom 5% of the sail, so it's uh, more a pre-race thing. And then we have a two to one main halyard just to reduce our mass compression. Goes right up to the top and then um, has a lock at the top, so we've got no cleats for it on the deck. So it goes up, goes into the lock, and then the halyard slack all day, so we have zero mass compression, which is, uh, does a lot for the uh, weight, weight of the mass, a lot lighter, and uh, it's a lot more responsive. Cool, so this is, um, this is the nerve center of the boat, this is the mass bay, so this is the epicenter of all our maneuvers, uh, where everything goes on. Um, so all our, our main halyards led down here, and then this is the trip line for the main halyard lock, so as I said earlier, the main goes up and stays up and is locked at the top, and then this is what releases it to bring it back down. Uh, we have two Cunninghams here that are continuous. They go underneath the tramp on the take-up, so we're not left with any, any slack at all in the boat. It's nice and tidy because during each manoeuvre, we sprint across the boat as fast as we can to get to the other side, and it's really key to make sure that there's not a lot of slack or ropes in the bottom of the boat just to fall and land flat on your face on. Just going on, there's um, our Spinnaker halyard here. So our Jenica is actually, a f it furls up completely, so, and then we stow it in these bags that go along the length of the trampoline, um, and it's left the tack's left out at the bow on a furler, so when we drop, we furl, and then we drop it into these bags and stir up for the upwind. Now, we need a lot of halyard tension on a furling sail, especially as it's so flat. Our apparent wind is so great and so far forward that we need lots of halyard tension. So we actually have a constrictor cleat in the mast, and the way that works is uh, a lot like a Chinese finger trap. So if you remember those when you were a kid, um, it's effectively the outer core of a rope, and it when, uh, when we release the trip line, and this is in its release position, uh, it goes, goes tight around the rope and grips it, and it's a lot better for the rope than a conventional jammer for the load. There's a lot less wear, 
and there's um, a lot less weight and that sits inside our rig and so this is in the lock position and then we pull that and lock it in the gate there and that's in the unlock position and the Halley can move freely and then when we put the Jenica up, lock it off, this gets led out to one of the primary winches to tension it and, uh, and then we can just drop it again and the constrictor does all the work. So it's another nice feature, the boat's nice and clean, we keep things in the rig or, or taken up so we have as little as possible going on and allows the boat to be a nice clean platform for all our, all our manoeuvres. Um, there's only a few other things going on here, we have our diamonds, these keep our mast in column or keep them straight and we have a little bolt just at the mast base here that allows us to bring those on and let those off and it's fairly simple, the windier it is the more, the more of that moral tension we have on. Um, this is also where the fine main control dead ends and also so another unique feature of this boat or unique to, uh, to multi-hulls is uh, we have a rotating wing mast. So this, this mast counts as sail area for us. Um, our main sail is 22 metres and this will give us an extra uh, three or four metres of sail area. We can trim this with this cleat up here. So we let this off to give us more rotation. You can see there we're at max rotation there and that adds a lot of power and just as you want to depower the boat you just bring in this control line, straightens the rig out and uh, minimizes the rotation and minimizes the power. So in heavy winds we'll have it locked in the middle like this and in the lighter stuff we'll have it, or downwind we'll have it all the way out, just trying to generate as much curvature in the front of the sail as we can that um, just helps us with, it, with the efficiency of the boat and adds, adds a lot. It's very, very noticeable when you're sailing. Um, otherwise we have all our furling lines down here, the jib furls and so does the Jenica. These both go through the same cleat. So it's another example of weight saving and efficiency on this boat. We only need the one because when one's out, the other's in. So, uh, so to have two, there will always be one that will be redundant. So we just run them both through. Then we have a self-tacking jib. So we have one sheet for the jib and uh, it tacks by itself from side to side. It's a lot quicker, it's a lot more efficient. And then if we are using it downwind, then we, it'll jibe itself as well. Um, that's pretty much it at the front of the boat. We see just for livability, we have some water bottle holders here, and then we have a little bit of storage for food and et cetera during the race, but try not to go in there. We normally try and seal that at the beginning of the day just to keep all the water out. So, um, so one of the reasons this boat is so fast, uh, well, to give you an idea of the speeds, upwind will uh, tend to average between 16 and, and 18 knots at best, and downwind we can average between 19 and, and 21 knots at the moment. Um, and we're always learning, so hopefully as, uh, as we get closer to the Tour de France in July next year, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to push those a little bit. But one of the reasons the boat is so fast is because uh, it, of, its, uh, of its design and the fact that it's a multi-hull. And uh, a lot of you if, you, if you've done any sailing or done any sailing in monohulls, um, it'll look a bit different. It's got three hulls um, and it hasn't got a keel. We have a daggerboard like a dinghy, but obviously unlike a dinghy, we have a lot more sail area than, than a dinghy would. So. We have, uh, it's a 22 square meter mainsail, a 32 square meter Jenica and an 11 meter uh, jib. Um, and the way that we can handle that power is because the boat's so wide, we have a huge amount of, um, of riding moment. And uh, the physicists among you will know all about the mechanics of, uh, of the leverage we can generate from having all the power resting on that leeward hull, lifting these two out of the water, but these two also swinging us back down again, just like a keel would work on a conventional monohull. Now, this is great and this allows us to ha carry this power and have a lot more form stability, is what it's known as. Um, but the other thing that's excellent is because we've gotten rid of the keel and the lead bulb, uh, we're a lot lighter. So our total sailing weight is at 500 kilos, um, whereas um, a, convent a, a, boat, a, mo a monohull of this size, like um, a small keel boat, might weigh um, over double that, maybe up to, uh, up to two tonnes. So, uh, it's quite exciting to be able to sail a boat that's so light because it's so responsive, it's so quick um, and just has huge amounts of power without, without really feeling as tender as it might do thanks to the huge amount of stability it can generate.
Epic. Pretty mad. Full on. Exhilarating. Intense. Scary. I've got to move.